Oh my goodness, look at that. Perfect. First try, Deep Sea Coder is the best open source coding model out there. It's better than GPT 3.5 and it's incredibly close in performance to GPT 4. So is it actually as good as they're saying? We're gonna test it today, let's go. So before we jump in, I've created a new rubric just for coding models. And so I have a bunch of tests that we're gonna use today. I'm gonna evolve this over time. If you have any suggestions of other coding challenges that I should give these models, let me know in the comments below. And thank you to everybody who commented on my Twitter thread, giving me some of these tests that I'm gonna be using today. So this is Deep Sea Coder. It is a brand new, completely from scratch foundational model. Let's take a look at it before we actually test it out. So it was tested with 87% code and 13% natural language in both English and Chinese. It was pre-trained on two trillion tokens and they have various sizes of the model from 1 billion to 33 billion parameter versions. It has a 16K window context size. Now, some of these newer open source coding models are already being used as GitHub Copilot replacements. And so you can have your very own GitHub Copilot completely open source, completely local, no internet required, running in Visual Studio code for free. If you want a tutorial on how to get that set up, let me know in the comments below. And it also says it's open source and free for research and commercial use. Here's a little graph of the performance versus GPT-4, GPT-3.5 Turbo, and other coding models. Here's Code Llama. And as you can see, Deep Sea Coder Base performs better than any other open source model on this list. Now, the one that they did not mention is the Find model, P-H-I-N-D. And I'm going to be testing that in a separate video. And here it is against the closed source models. It beats GPT-3.5 Turbo, and it gets really close to GPT-4 in performance. All right, enough talk, let's test it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and test it through the website itself. And all you need to do is sign up for an account and you can test it. But again, this model is completely open source. You can use one of the many methods that I've shown in previous videos for how to get this loaded on RunPod or locally on your computer. So I've already signed up, here it is. And it has this pretty hideous background generated by AI. So that's really cool that it was generated by AI, but geez, this background is very ugly. All right, the first test that we're gonna run is one that we've actually used on every other test that we've run on our original LLM rubric. So create JSON for the following. There are three people, two males. One is named Mark, another is named Joe, and a third person who is a woman is named Sam. The woman is age 30 and the two men are both 19. All right, let's see. Here's the JSON representation of the given data. So we have people, name, 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 gender, and age. Perfect. Yeah, that's an absolute pass. And I'm gonna start a new conversation each time so that it doesn't have any memory from the previous result and it won't cause any issues in future results. Next, write a basic contact form in Python using any front end you want. The contact form should include name, email, and phone number it should save to a database. And one thing I'll say is it is extremely fast. So looking at the code already, it looks like it's gonna use Flask and SQLite. All right, here's the entire Python section. So let's go ahead and copy that. Switching over to Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna open a new window. I'm gonna open a new tab, paste in the Python code. It already recognizes it's Python as main.py. Then we have a second HTML, which is gonna be the front end. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the code there. Switch back to Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna paste in the HTML and I saved it as form.html. And it actually says save this HTML file as templates slash index.html. So I actually need to change that. I'm gonna change a couple things things here. So it says main.py.py. Obviously that's wrong. I'm going to go ahead and remove that second dot pi. I'm going to create a new folder called templates. And then I'm going to name this index.html and put that in templates. There we go. Now back to deep seek. It says to run the application, you will need to install Flask. So let's go ahead and copy this code and install it. Switch back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open up the terminal. Let's go ahead and spin up a Conda environment. Conda create dash n form Python equals 3.11. All right, then we're going to activate Conda. Conda activate form. Okay, we're in form now. Now I'm going to try installing it using Python from the folder I know it's already in. All right, there, it looks like it's working. And then we're going to run python app.py. All right. It looks like we got it up and running now. So running on, let's open it up. And there we go. We got a contact form with name, email, and phone number. And I filled it out. Let's click submit. Oh, we got an error. No such table contact. And I guess this makes sense because we never actually created the table. So let's try to get it to do that. All right. So I'm just going to type when submitting this form, I get this error and I paste it in the error. Yep, and it says it doesn't create the table automatically. So to create the table, you need to run the following commands in your Python shell. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So let's open up Python. Then we're gonna do from app import DB contact, no module named app. Ah, right, because I named it main.py. Let's go ahead and rename this file app.py and let's try again. So from app import DB comma contact and that worked. And now we're gonna create all from the DB. So db.create underscore all and then parentheses. Looks like we ran into another issue. So I'm gonna copy these logs and paste it back into the app and see what it says. All right, let's try that. Okay, maybe that worked. Let's try, here we go. Python app.py. Let's open it up, here it is. I'm gonna input some information and submit. Okay, I think that might have worked. I think it inserted into the database successfully. All right, there it is. I opened up DB Browser for SQLite and there's the information right there. That's what I just submitted. So that worked. A couple of issues, but pretty minor overall. And really the code worked. It was just the fact that I didn't have the database created. So I'm gonna give this a pass. Next, write unit tests in Python for the following business logic. Ask the user for their name, confirm it doesn't include anything but alphanumeric characters then reverse the string and output it. All right, here's the unit tests using the unit test library. And it also gave me a description of everything. So let's test it out. Copy the code. Okay, so it wrote unit tests, but now how do I actually tell that the unit tests are working? I'm gonna have it write code that completes the unit tests and I'm gonna test it myself. So now write code that passes all of the tests you just wrote. All right, there it goes. Let's copy this code, switch over to Visual Studio Code. Now I have the unit tests and I'm actually gonna rename app.py to be test.py. And then I'm gonna create a second file, paste the new code in there, and I'm gonna save it as app.py. Now, one thing I just realized is how is it gonna actually test that code? Let's make sure that the tests that we just wrote are related to the app.py file. Okay, the tests were placed in test.py and the code to test is in app.py. Make sure that the test.py is actually testing the code in app.py. Okay, so we import reverse name from app and let's give it a test. Okay, looks like we got three passes, so that worked. Now let's just make sure it's working. So I'm gonna run the code and see if it actually works. So enter your name, Matthew, and there it is. That's my name reversed, perfect. And so that's a pass for both the code writing and the code testing. All right, next, we're gonna use a challenge from the website adacore.com. And this is a test in which we're gonna have the model find bugs in the code. So we have a bunch of code right here. I'm gonna highlight it all. I'm gonna go to Deep Seat Coder, start a new conversation, I'm gonna paste it in and then at the bottom we're going to say find all of the bugs in this code okay so interestingly enough it says that it seems to be correct and there doesn't seem to be any obvious bugs however there are a few points that you might want to consider and it gives me a bunch of efficiency recommendations and then finally it just stops so this is a definite fail especially because it just seems to output the same thing over and over again and for those of you who are wondering when i click go code peer we have the errors right there. So I hope this was a good test, but it definitely failed. Okay, next we're gonna do a coding challenge from the website edabit.com, validating a set in the set game. So we have a detailed description, a bunch of examples, and then we're gonna check our code. And what the model needs to do is right here, write a function that determines whether three cards constitute a valid set. And all the rules of being a valid set are right here, as well as some examples. So. I'm gonna copy this whole thing and I'm just gonna copy paste it right into the model. So let's start a new conversation, paste, and then let's go. Okay, that's really short code, but let's see if it works. Okay, back here. I realize it's expecting this in JavaScript. So let me do that again, but I'm gonna specify that it needs to give me JavaScript. So I said, rewrite the code in JavaScript. And here we are. Okay, copy code, let's go back. Let's paste it in and check. All right, test passed, awesome, look at that. So that is a pass. All right, next, I'm gonna have it describe what some pretty complex code does. And I've renamed all the variables so it gives no hint as to what it does, but this is a quick sort algorithm. So you can see it right here. So I'm gonna send, let's see what it does. All right, there it is. The given code is a Python Lambda function that implements the quick sort algorithm. Here's a breakdown of the code. This is extremely impressive. So this code is a recursive implementation of the quick sort algorithm. This is phenomenal. That's an absolute pass. All right, now for the one I know you've all been waiting for. Write the game snake in Python. Now Deep Seek Coder uses this exact test on their homepage as an example of what Deep Seek can do. So I hope it's able to actually accomplish it in one go. All right, it's starting to output and it looks like it's gonna be using Pygame. Okay, that's really cool. I've never actually seen this type of formatting before where it has an equals with a slash through it. And I guess that's does not equal. Maybe that's just the formatting that it gives you, but I, I've never seen that before. That's really cool. All right, it's done. 
Let's test it out. Switch over to Visual Studio Code. Let's open up a new window. I'm gonna paste in all the code in there. Let's save it. And it doesn't look like there are any errors, although the Pygame module cannot be imported. So let's go ahead and install that. Pip install Pygame. All right, let's play it. Oh my goodness, look at that. Perfect. First try, the score works perfectly. All the directions work. Look at that. I am so impressed. One go. And let's look what happens if we exit the screen. All right, and it stopped. It didn't just quit. It told me what the score was. It waited and then it quit. Phenomenal, absolute pass, extremely impressive. All right, that's it for Deep Sea Coder. It's an extremely impressive coding model. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.